The Franchise Model Part 5 Franchising The following is a contribution from Ian Hughes, a franchisee who has personal experience of the franchising model with travel counsellors. Travel counsellors say, we offer a friendly one-to-one -one travel service, a personal relationship with an experienced travel expert who cares about you and your journey. Ian says, I began my franchising journey a little under a year ago now, looking for a career change, but knowing that the area I wanted to move into would prove difficult. With this knowledge, I conducted much research on the internet, attending franchise exhibitions, and meeting with the company whom I had wished to franchise on a number of occasions. This included open days at head office, and speaking to others who'd made that step to see how they had found the transition including some who had followed a similar journey to myself. With all of the due diligence complete, I paid a fairly substantial fee to not only take the company brand, but to undertake their training, understand their ethos, and have their continued administrative and business support from their base as head office, while I build my business. My situation may be slightly different to other franchisees in that I had zero experience in the field in which I was entering, so I had some intensive training to undertake. Fortunately, travel counsellors offer an academy franchise route for those completely new to the travel industry, as well as a more traditional franchise model for those who have a background in the industry. I took the academy route and found this to be very well structured. It allowed me to return home to open my business with enough knowledge to do so, and grow at my own rate. I was issued with a laptop, had a business line installed at home, and connected wirelessly to their IT systems for my return home. Due to the nature of the beast, I was never going to have all the knowledge required from this training, which is why I have continued contact with head office for support should it be required as well as a substantial amount of online e-learning to further progress my understanding. It is this contact that I have found to be the most invaluable aspect of being a franchisee. Now this may not be the case for all franchisers, but having that knowledge and support at the other end of a phone has been exceptionally important from my perspective. From the smallest queries regarding individual inquiries I had received, to instantaneous support in situations of urgency, as well as IT provision when practical issues arose. The fact that they are there is a comforting guard against those days when you wonder if this has been the correct decision or not. Beyond this, I have almost daily contact with a personal business development manager who advises me on growth of my business and the more practical issues involved in running one. Again something I've found hugely important, given this is my first venture in doing so. So while my situation is individual and my franchise somewhat rare in its circumstances in the market, the support of a strong central hub has been the most valuable part of my investment. With all of the staff wanting the same success, it makes it much easier, practically and emotionally, to forge ahead with my ambitions to see my business grow and eventually thrive. So that's Ian's story and our thanks to him for that. So that's the end of our look at franchising. I'll see you again in the next lesson.